Over 86% of you are not subscribed, so if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and set it to all, because if you don't, you won't get notified for all of my videos. We're trying to hit 600 subscribers so we can move on to the next Pretty Kill Let's Play. So without further ado, let's try to make this happen. Okay, did not expect to do two reviews back to back, but this one is also a priority because it's the 5th anniversary of Kill Kill Pretty Kill Island Mode. I'll give the season a review in the future, but for now I want to focus on the movie instead. I can't believe I'm uploading this on Halloween day, but I'll think of something for next year's Halloween. Hopefully this actually pays off because, believe me, I've been staying up all night trying to work on this review, so I hope this actually pays off. Goku Genio everyone, the Starlight List player is here. And today, I'll be starting my review on Kira Kira Pretty Kira Ala Mode, The Milfoil well of Memories. So, during the summer of 2017, they were working on the 23rd Pretty Kira movie, which was Kira Kira. The stage setting was going to be in the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, which will be the second film to use this since 2010 when they did Hard Catch Pretty Kira, the fashion show in the capital of flowers. So, how did they come up with the aspect of making Paris-themed Pretty Kira films? Well, apparently this has something to do with the behind the scenes aspects of the series, Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. During the making of this series, Zagtoon and Method Animation collaborated with Toei Animation to make this series. It was the story of a French girl who transforms into a magical girl named Ladybug. The animations look really good, but I wish they would have gone with the 2D anime style rather than 3D. Now, keep in mind, this was made before they worked on the Hard Catch Pudicure movie. Since Hard Catch was the first to have a movie with the setting being in Paris, the Pretty Cure production staff was sent on a trip to Paris to get some inspiration. And the start of Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir has begun, after seeing the beauty of Paris reminded as the city of love. This was also made apparent in the 10th anniversary series of Happiness Charge, where we were introduced to the French Cure, Cure Earl. After the success of Hard Catch, Miraculous, and Happiness Charge, Toei decided to make another Pretty Cure film that centered in Paris. This time, the movie was going to be focused on the Sixth Ranger herself, C.L. Kirohoshi, aka Kira Parfait, which was a result of last year's movie, Maho Girls Pretty Cure Miraculous Transformation Kira Mofuron. This was a tie-in to episode 37 of Kira Kira, as we saw a cameo of a chef named Jean Pierre, and it was when C.L.'s teacher, Madame Soline, wanted her to come back to Paris for a cooking contest, thus kicking things off with the movie. This would also be the first Pretty Cure movie to have another team interact with the current team, and making their return are the Maho Girls Pretty Cure. The movie would be directed by Yukata Shushida, and he would later direct Tropical Rouge Pretty Cure. So, does this movie still hold up after 5 years? Let's find out. So Ichika and company made their way to Paris, and suddenly a giant whisk monster appeared out of nowhere and the Cures tried to stop it. Parfait tries to stop the monster but was caught into a trap, turning her to a fairy form of her cure form. Later on, the girls were enjoying themselves at a party. <laughs> yep, these three made their appearance here. While everyone was enjoying themselves, Jean Pure actually arrives on the scene. <laughs> well, what do you know, Akira still has her feminine side. CL introduces them to Jean Pierre, who works in a cooking laboratory, and there's a goddamn miracle light on the counter. So a doll fairy named Cook appears, and it turns out she was discovered sleeping in a book that Jean Pierre found in a bookshelf. Something that was never explained, but oh well. Oh Jesus Christ, this is hilarious. <laughs> CL tells Jean Pierre that her state of mind isn't well and that she needs a solution. So Jean Pierre suggests that they should make Parsian milk cream. CL then explains the story on how she and Picario met Jean Pierre, how they decided to work on making sweets together, and how she was able to obtain her human form. <laughs> seriously, I can't take them seriously. 
Unfortunately, the cream wasn't approved and Jean Pierre scolds Seal, telling her how she's changed and that she isn't fit to participate in the contest. He even went as far as to suggest that she should work on her own instead of a team so she could improve again. This led to CL feeling uneasy about what he said. The next day, Ichika and the others decides to help her out on a new recipe and she suggests that they should make a meal fouet and despite how challenging the recipe is and CL's lack of confidence, her friends are still willing to take on the challenge. With all the hard work paid off, the meal fouet has been made, with CL gaining her motivation back. During the little fiasco, trouble starts to appear. One room involves endless dough, one room is frozen solid, and the giant whisk monster appeared again, using its powers to target patisseries. So they ran away from the MOTW, protecting the suite, and luckily Pekodin uses the miracle light to make the monster go away. They rushed over to see if Jean Pierre and Cook were alright, and they wanted him to try out their new recipe, but he decided to show them his newest creation. After finding out that Cook was behind targeting the Persisias, she summons cake monsters. Okay, one, he's gone insane, and two, I love Yukari's expressions in this movie. The Kira Kira Kira's would face off against the cake monsters, but suddenly, the monsters multiplied and are turning Paris into a sweet shop, with Mirai, Rico, and Hachan evacuating the city. As they're struggling to stop the evil pastries, Cook arrives and notices their strengths as cures. <laughs> Firstly, she's a cat. How do you not see the cat tail above her rear? And secondly, that is one generic one-liner there, Cook. It doesn't really matter anyway because she then turns them into animals that are the opposite of their animal forms. And now they're struggling to fight in their animal forms. Well, to be more accurate, Whip, Custard, and Chocolate are struggling to fight in their animal forms. Why do I find Macaron as a panda adorable? So with the exception of Whip, everyone was able to get used to their new animal forms. However, they would be outnumbered and powerless until... That Maho girls appeared in time to help fend off against the evil pastries, giving them the chance to go after Cook. And damn, this fight is actually amazing. While that's going on, they made it to Jean Pierre's workshop. <laughs> Bravo, Whip. Bravo the fuck oh. The ultimate creation was complete, but they needed one final ingredient. <laughs> But when I saw this part, I laughed my ass off. Cook is a goddamn savage for that. So she added him into the batter, causing it to turn into a giant cake monster, turning the entire city of love into a sweet shop and defeating the cures in process. But that's not stopping CL as she comes up with a way to defeat Cook and save Jean Pierre. So she tried transforming into Cure Parfait once again, but was struggling thanks to Cook's evil whisk. However, with the power of the Miracle Lights, she was able to transform once again, turning into Super Cure Parfait, along with Whip and the others. Together, the six of them face off against the monster. Macaron senses that Cook was an aspiring patissier, but blamed her own weaknesses on the people's quote, betrayal. But Cook denies this, saying they didn't understand her sweets, and after hearing Jean Pure telling Ciel to destroy both him and the monster, she forces the monster to fling Parfait into a building and then summons a fog, causing the cures to lose their guard. Parfait managed to stop the cake monster with an extremely powerful headbutt attack, and now they need to let Jean Pure try out the milf oil to turn him back to normal. And surprisingly, the sweet treat would turn gigantic, but they needed ingredients to make the frosting. So they flew around looking for what they need to make the frosting. And after combining the ingredients together, Cook got the monster back on his feet attacking Parfait from behind, and just when they were about to get cooked, they were saved by Pecorin and the Miracle Light. So with Custard, Gelato, Macaron, and Chocolate, the Maho girls, and everyone else using the lights to help Parfait and Whip, they managed to complete the Milf World and served it to Jean Pierre, 
only to be poured into the monster, reaching the core. Parfait thanks him for teaching her the undeniable technique and resolve of his that have influenced her to create sweets of her own. However, she also teaches him the importance of friendship, explaining how his mindset has hesitated her from befriending new people in the beginning, and how that time he baked the milk well had inspired her since. And after one bite, Jean Pierre was turned back to normal. But Cook ain't given up that easily, so she went inside the monster to become the ultimate sweet. However, the milk well gave the Kill Kill Cures a new power, using it to purify Cook, saving Paris in the process, except they forgot to fix the damn Eiffel Tower. The baking contest came to a close, with CL getting second place, but we're still happy. Jean Pierre is doing what he always does, with a human cook staring at his milk well. And the Kill Kill team is back to their usual gig. Despite this only being a movie, I think they've done a good job making CL the center of the movie. There were no flaws to it and I'm glad they've succeeded in that regard. And the plot wasn't that dark and serious like they did in the previous movies. To me this felt like a breath of fresh air to me. I like how they made Cook both adorable and savage at the same time. She wasn't as edgy as Night Pumpkin but I still enjoyed the screen time she was given. The vocal songs really slapped. For the first time in Pretty Good History, instead of using the second ending theme for the movie, they've decided to come up with something new. For the ending theme, we have Troy Beyond Symbol, performed by Yui Komagata and Kanako Miyamoto, and the insert song Memoir Milfuel, performed by the Kira Kira Patisserie. The music is really amazing and I highly recommend it. I wish they'd given more detail on Jean Pierre finding Cook sleeping in a book. How did she even end up in that book? Also, how would she even turn into a fairy if she had a human form? These are things that could have been explained in the movie. Now, the Maho girls being here was awesome to see, but I wish the writers actually did more with them. They were never really interacting much with the Kira Kira crew. The only time they did was when the Kira Kira team was in trouble. And secondly, they say that the Magic Crystal assigned them to protect the citizens of Paris, but there was no flashback or indication on that. Still, at least they were better handled than the Go-Go team in Healing Goods movie. When I first watched this movie, I thought it was okay, but after re-watching it over and over again, i say it's better than Gold Princess. It felt like they put a lot of care into this movie despite its flaws. If I were to give this movie a score, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It's definitely a movie I would recommend. With that out of the way, I can finally take November off and enjoy my time relaxing. And when I come back in December, I'll work on the final part of, hap of the Happiness Charge review, as well as part 2 of my Sugar Sugar Room Blind review. I do have something planned for Christmas Eve, however. But until then, this is the Starlight Let's Player signing out. As always, go Kigenyo and have a star-tastic day everyone. I knew I would fulfill my dream, yeah They knew I started from the bottom, now I made it, yeah The possibilities are endless, yeah, I say, yeah I got the rules and I got everything I need, yeah And now I'm chilling with a pretty gentle lady, yeah She got a kind of gentle personality, yeah She got them curvy hips and a booty for booty